Isaac Sturgill is here with us answering your questions about housing and eviction. Text your questions to 336-379-5775. Um, Isaac, I would like to first uh, talk about something that you had mentioned about, um, what do you call it, eviction court? Yeah, so we actually have an, uh, an eviction prevention clinic that we're doing at the uh, Guilford County Courthouse in Greensboro. So, you know, legal aid, people can dial our, our hotline at 877-201-6426, but we also do this in-person clinic and it's at the courthouse in Greensboro. It's every Tuesday from nine in the morning to 11 in the morning. And then we do another session from two o'clock to four o'clock in the afternoon. So there are legal aid attorneys there that can uh, offer legal services to tenants, but there's also representatives from the rental assistance agencies. So like for someone, for example, that has submitted an application for rental assistance and they're looking for an update or something like that, they can drop into that Tuesday clinic and, and get some information there. So it's a really useful resource and they take, they take walk-ins. So, I mean, if you're around the courthouse on Tuesday morning or afternoon and want to pop in and, and try to you know, see if you can get some help, that uh, those resources are available. That's great to hear. Uh, oftentimes people will reach out to us saying that they have an issue with fill in the blank at their apartment or their or their home that they're renting. What are some of the things that landlords are required to provide immediate attention? So, I mean, we deal a lot of cases where tenants need repairs made. And the basic rule is that, you know, any any kind of repair that a tenant needs made to the home that, that affects the, the tenant's use of the home, the landlord is required to repair it within a reasonable amount of time, but what's considered reasonable depends on how severe the issue is. So if it's something like not having any heat during the winter time or you know, not having any working electricity or something like that, um, what's reasonable may just be a matter of you know, 48 hours or something like that. So it kind of depends on how serious the condition is, but it's important to know that as a tenant, you do have a, a right to repairs. And if you request repairs, a, a landlord has a legal obligation to make those repairs. One thing Tanya often tells people who are in a situation like that is you have to make the report in writing. Why is that so important to report in writing to your landlord? Well, so, you know, you don't always just technically, you don't always have to make the request in writing for it to be valid, but it's a really good idea to always do it in writing. And the reason why that's really important is because if you ever, end up in eviction court or you're having to put on a defense for yourself, you need proof that you put your landlord on notice of those issues. If you can't prove that your landlord you know, knew about these repairs that need to be made, then you may not win your case. And then, so let's say you're in a situation where it's the middle of winter, your heat goes out, you've made the request, it's been more than the allotted time for the landlord to fix it. What do you do next if you're still dealing with that issue? There's a couple of things you can do, you know, and this is true all across the state. If you live in a, a, a city that has a, a local housing code or a county housing code, you can request a housing code inspection from the local government, which is, uh, you know, free of charge. That can get an inspector out there and get them to uh, issue a report or an order to the landlord to make the repairs. And if that still doesn't work, that may be a time to try to contact legal aid or get some legal assistance because if the situation is serious enough, um, sometimes legal aid can help those tenants file an, an emergency motion with the court to get a judge to intervene to order that the repairs are made. We've talked about the things that um, are required to be repaired. What are some things that really don't require a landlord's attention? I think mold is probably one of those, right? Well, so mold, mold is tricky because, uh, you know, if, if there is mold in the apartment, and there's things that uh, are wrong with the, the apartment that are contributing to that, like leaky pipes or, um, you know, not, not having a you know, maybe like a leaky sink or, you know, standing water or something like that. The landlord is responsible for fixing those issues, which should get rid of the mold. The thing that's hard about mold is that it's hard to, to know what kind of mold it is and, and to test for it. So I want to say landlords are not required to fix the conditions that cause mold, but it can be hard for a tenant to prove, uh, you know, exactly what uh the mold is you know what type of mold it is or if it's just mold or something like mildew or something like that one common theme when we do um get phone calls about mold issues is people will often say well i have a one-year-old child who lives in the home with me and it seems as though they're having breathing issues i think it's tied to mold what do you tell them in that situation and again that's that's a place where it can be um kind of difficult because there are several different types of mold and mildew and some of them are dangerous and some of them are, are not dangerous, right? And so you really, you know, to be able to press your legal rights in a situation like that, you need to get the mold tested. Unfortunately, there's not 
you know, really any like free local resources that I'm really aware of that do a, a, a quick job of coming in and testing for the specific type of mold. But I have seen some tenants that will, you know, hire a testing company out of their own pocket or get some help from family or friends to do that. And if they can identify that the mold is, um, is a dangerous type of mold, um, then the next step is to take that to, you know, the child's doctor or to seek medical attention and see if there's a connection between that and, you know, whatever health conditions the, uh, the child is, is complaining about.